Welcome to Time 100 Talks. It's an extreme pleasure to be here. Thank you. I want to get right into it. How does it feel to be one of this year's Time 100 honorees? Does it feel good? It is stunning and surprising, you know, really incredibly surprised (laughs) Um, and wildly humbled. I mean, this is a list that I've been looking at for years um, for an incredible level of inspiration and courage. And so to be considered among them is, um, you know, I think I'm still processing the the honor, but so humbled and, and grateful. Well, I would certainly say you've earned it. You've had a hand in some of Netflix's most notable films and documentaries over the past year or so. I mean, let's just talk about Tiger King. Let's talk about To All the Boys I've Loved Before, one of my favorites. Let's talk about White Helmets. What does it feel like when you know you have a bona fide hit on your hands, when you're starting to get that feedback, you see what's coming in and you just know it? It kind of starts before that, right? It starts when you're working with the creators, you take that first meeting where you really want to understand what the creative ambition is, right? When you sit with a writer or a director, um, really what you're listening to is their dream, right? It's their vision. It is creating that which does not yet exist in the world. It's a little bit of magic. So having the great opportunity to sit in those rooms with those great minds and hearts and spirits and understand what that is. And then to be able to be in process with them to help them actualize and to bring that to the screen, like that in itself, that process is an incredible honor and so exciting because it's it's never the same ride twice. Uh, The twists and turns, any filmmaker will tell you the plan is never 100% executed. In fact, a lot of times it becomes delightfully different. Um, And so that process is amazing. And what you hope for, I think, in storytelling is that you're able to truly connect with an audience. That is really, if you can actualize your dream and then find others to connect with, that is the dream actualized. So to your question about like when you start to feel it bubble, that is a feeling beyond measure because you know that this thing that you have held deeply and you have created has, has found its brethren, right? It's found its hearts right. and minds. And I think the thing that's so exciting in our role, cause we're really here to help support, right? We are here to mm-hmm. really help actuate vision. And in a lot of times I think about it as sort of like midwifing a process. Mm-hmm. They are the creators. We are here simply at every turn to say, how can we help? What do you need? If you hit a roadblock, come to us. We're here to try to help. But it's really their journey and seeing them flourish and seeing them connect with their audience. And in our case, we have immense, immense opportunity of connecting them to 190 countries simultaneously. Wow. That is extraordinary. And for them to have that immediate feedback loop, whether it's seeing on the service in the top 10, their film starting to explode, or certainly now in today's world, it's all on social media. And being able to have a global conversation about the story that's so near and dear to them is incredibly rewarding. I Listen, it's not even that I have to imagine. I've definitely been part of those conversations. Trust me, I've used a hashtag and I've gotten into a discussion or two about the content of some of these documentaries and films. How do you create films that become these massive cultural touch points. I mean, we're all going to be thinking about going into quarantine, going into lockdown and watching Tiger King. Like people are going to be talking about that perhaps as long, (laughs) you know, as we're alive. How does that happen? Well, in this case, in almost every case, it's about um, exceptional filmmaking, right? Mm -hmm. So the filmmakers, Eric and Rebecca, so deeply researched, had taken so much time to develop relationships and trust. And I think importantly in this particular case, um, really allowed each of the subjects to present themselves, right? There's not a characterization or a judgment that's drawn. It's simply giving people the space and the time to express themselves in the first person and then allow those stories to evolve in time. And, you know, for us, Uh, we always think of it as story first, right? So when folks come and talk to us and they tell us about the storytelling universe, the shape it's going to take 
sometimes you can't know until you're in it, right? So sometimes it starts as a feature film and then you realize you need a little bit more real estate so you go to a limited uh, episodic format. Other times you start thinking it's gonna be episodic and you think, you know what, this is gonna be most impactful, most powerful, you know, as a feature film. And in the case of Tiger King, the thing that was clear and extraordinary was the access that Eric and Rebecca had secured, the trust and their ability to allow the story to truly unfold in an organic way. Um, and I think certainly having the world suddenly finding themselves indoors, uh, wanting to really fill their time. And, you know, we think about what we do as delighting and entertaining. But, you know, in this case, I think it was people were curious about a world they knew very little about. And then it was also escapist. It was so far from everybody else's true reality of being indoors <laughs> that they got to go to this, this place, this brand new place told in a first person basis, which I think is really riveting, right? When you get oh, yeah. to uh, experience another person's life. And, um, you know, you talked about to all the boys I've loved before. You've talked about white helmets. I mean, I think the goal state is really about providing an opportunity for connection, right? And what better way to do that than to have a front row seat to somebody else's lived experience? And when it's done through these incredible filmmakers' hands, where you can sit inside that experience. When I look at something like To All the Boys, and I see Lana Condor as an Asian American actress playing Lara Jean Covey, in high school, just in love, right? We can all relate to that. But when yes. I was growing up, I didn't get to see heroes like that. You know, there were no Asian American leads, certainly not in a romantic lead. And what I love in these films and really Jenny Han's beautiful book series upon which they're based is, you know, Large and Covey's just a girl, right? It's, it's, and, and the way that they have deftly in the films presented her is the culture informs her, right? She is a mm -hmm. Korean American girl, but it doesn't entirely define her experience in the film. So it's a really right. genuine sort of experience of this girl who just wants to be seen and wants to be loved. And we're all rooting for her because she's beautifully flawed um, and incredibly optimistic. And I just think that that shared experience is incredibly powerful to have, you know, that front seat, front, front row seat to that. I love that you said that specifically because on top of being a fan of To All the Boys I Loved Before, on top of being a huge fan of Jenny Han and her writing and her work, um, one of the things that Netflix has really done well in this space, I think, is include all kinds of stories with all kinds of people at the center of those stories. So I'm wondering, you know, even though you guys have done so much already, what kind of stories would you really like to see more of on Netflix or really anywhere? Like, what are the stories that you feel like, I want more of that, I wanna hear more about this, where's that story? Yeah, I think the way we think about it is, if you think about Hollywood, it's such a huge and influential cultural export to the world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but for the last hundred years, we've had a pretty specific look and feel to what a hero is, right? Mm -hmm. To who your leads are, who can fall in love, who can save the world. Right. Um, and the reality is the world is a lot bigger than that, right? The United States is 5% of the global population. We have the immense, immense blessing of a global audience, right? So when you are trying to present stories for 190 different countries, right? And 193 million member households, guess what? Like the idea of what their hero is and the person that they're gonna fall in love with is gonna be wildly diverse. Right? Our singular and only mission every day is to engage people and delight people. So they need to see themselves. They need to feel themselves. They need to be able to dream the possibilities in the same way that, you know, when I see uh, Large and Covey, I'm like, wow, okay. Like that didn't exist before. And there's a whole generation of young girls who now see themselves in that way. And you multiply that around the world, right? Whether that is your race, your gender, how you identify, the idea that we are all so incredibly full of complexity. And what I hope for is that stories allow us to really embrace 
our full complexity and our full nuance. And to do that, you have to keep going up to the plate and swinging, meaning there can't just be one story about this one experience and that one experience. You have to keep presenting because if you think about the full um, spectrum of stories that can be told in the Asian experience, in the Black experience, it's rich and rife, it's sci-fi, it's adventure, it's romance, it's all those things um, that we can be and that we can identify with. And that's our real opportunity, is that we can do all of that. And that's what we're committed uh, to doing day by day by day, just, just stepping up to the plate and trying to make that rich, rich diversity of story. Speaking of commitment, you're a Netflix veteran. Like the platform <laughs> has been growing more and more um, during the time that you've been there. And I think more than people can really fathom. Because um, I know even when I think about the numbers, it is hard to fathom. What has it been like to actually be on that journey in real time, watching this platform happen? <laughs> it's a great question. Somebody, somebody likened it to flying into space on a rocket that you're building while you're flying, uh, <laughs> which I think is a really great analogy. Um, you know, for me, I joined in 2007. At the time that I joined, we were a DVD by mail company in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, and the thing is, the job that I took at that time uh, was to buy DVDs from all around the world, across mm -hmm. every format, which ended up being a stroke of luck for me. Um, on top of being you know, an absolute lover of diversity of storytelling. So it was frankly a dream job from that perspective. It really helped educate me on really the, the hunger of audiences and that we had been underestimating uh, what audiences were really, really hungry for based on um, what had been fairly limited distribution. Meaning it wasn't always easy to find a Japanese anime in the United States or a Bollywood story or a Korean drama, or an incredible story from Nigeria, it, to access these stories was really quite difficult. And what I got to do was, you know, bring these stories from all around the world to our audiences in the United States and through, um, you know, our interface to be able to make suggestions and recommendations of stories that they might love that just might happen to be in a language, not their native language. And because what we were doing was saying, hey, we think you might love it because what you love is romance. Mm -hmm. It just happens to be a romance that takes place in Korea. Starting to really recognize and, and see that people actually were incredibly hungry for that if you lowered the friction and, and made it easier for people to connect. And that really became the roadmap, right? As we started to grow globally, as we started to have creators from all around the world tell their stories, you know, today, fast forward to today, where we're really committed to releasing all of our original films and TV shows on the exact same day, all around the world, and localized, right? So in your local language, whether that's subtitles or dubs, so you can engage in the story in the way you're most comfortable, but you can go right into the heartbeat of the story as it's intended to be told. So I think, you know, it's so exciting because the commitment from the beginning to understanding how do we connect people to story? That hasn't changed. Um, right. My personal journey here has been um, immensely dynamic and exciting. Um, I think the thing that I feel most fortunate about is that I've had the opportunity to really reinvent myself. This is a place that uh, is in a constant state of change and evolution because guess what? The world is in a constant state of change and evolution. Yes. And we're trying to stay ahead of that uh, so that we can um, we can give you know viewers around the world what they want, but that has meant that new opportunities have arisen for me, and this is a place where um, you know you have that opportunity. So, and I feel immensely uh, grateful that I've been given those shots uh, to try, um, and not just to try and succeed, but also try and fail. And what's the learn and the fail, right? And I think. That's one of my favorite things about this place and this culture is that there isn't shame in failing, right? In fact, 
it's incredibly important to have the courage and the generosity to share your fail so that none of your colleagues make the same mistake. I always say to my team, I'm not telling you not to make mistakes. I'm just saying make new mistakes. Yes. Right? So if you make a mistake, share it. Be generous with your teammates. Let them learn with you and then go push the envelope and fall on your face somewhere else and then share that learn and share the wins, right? So I think being in a place where it embraces that evolution, the opportunity for people to continue to grow Mm -hmm. uh, and I think another thing where um, sometimes uh, it's difficult. People don't let others grow, right? right. Have you ever had that happen in a relationship yeah. where, you know, family is such a great place for that, right? Where they just think of you as the, the little kid at the, you know, folding table at Thanksgiving. And it's like, I've actually grown a little bit. Um, but the same thing applies to your peers and your colleagues and the community around you is, can you take a moment to take a breath? and look at that person, ask them questions, and really allow them to continue to grow and evolve, which I think is just such an important part of being in a team, right? And mm -hmm. being really supportive of one another. Um, and I think that that's something that I have been a great beneficiary of is the opportunity to keep excelling and growing and making mistakes and growing from those mistakes and trying again. And look what happens when you get the opportunity. Look what we get when you get the opportunity to stretch out that way confidently and secure that the people you work for are behind you all the way. I really, really like hearing about that. I've loved talking to you today. Congratulations again on being a Time 100 honoree. Thank, Thank you. you so much. The honor is overwhelming. And I have to say it just makes me want to do more. It just makes me want to be better. And uh, it just makes me really understand um, how finite a moment we are here on this planet. And what are you going to do with your moment? What are you going to put back out into the world? And um, I can't thank you enough. Thank you. Lisa Nishimura, I can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you. Thank you.